Well, we're just 73 days away from the presidential and parliamentary elections in 2024. Hello and welcome to Join Us Prime. We're live on DSTV Channel 421, Go TV Channel 125 and all our social media platforms as well as around the world on majoyline.com. In our headlines, this are convener of Fix the Country, Oliver Barker of Omao, and other protesters hospitalized, one other protester hospitalized while in police custody. As the police fight off claims, they denied the protesters medical attention. We're live at the court where dozens more detained protesters have been waiting to hear their fate, and indeed they have been, uh, uh, you know, they've had their fate. We'll tell you what the court said. And minority in government claim load shedding is back as its spokesperson on energy says there is currently a deficit of more than 500 megawatts. As we speak today, there is load shedding ongoing. Grid coal has been caught. But we also have breaking news coming in from the electricity company of Ghana. What it is? Stay with us. Joy News is learning that the managing director of the electricity company of Ghana, Samuel Dubek Mahama, has resigned from his position as MD of the company, according to a letter we've cited. His decision to resign is based on personal decision. My colleague, uh, 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 you know, Carlos Caloni, has been studying this letter and joins me via Zoom with details. So, Carlos, what does this letter say? All right, Kojo, so the letter is uh, divided into a number of paragraphs. The first part says that I'm writing to formally resign from my position as managing director of the electricity company of Ghana, effective two weeks from the date above. And this decision has not come easily, but after much reflection, I have concluded that it is the best uh, interest to step away for personal reasons and paragraph two says, over the past two years and four months, I have had the profound honor of serving the esteemed organization, and I'm truly grateful for the opportunities I have received. He goes on to say, I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to the board for your unwavering support and guidance throughout my tenure. Um, I also wish to express my sincere gratitude to the president for the trust placed in me, which has been a significant aspect of my journey here. And paragraph three says, I'm proud to leave behind a tangible achievement in our operations, having successfully reduced system losses from 30% to 26.7%. And this progress uh, reflects the hard work and dedication of our entire team. And I'm confident that they will continue to strive for excellence in the years to come. And the last but one paragraph says, to my colleagues and staff, I urge you to keep pushing forward your commitment and passion for the company having, uh, have been inspiring working there. And I have no doubt that you will provide steadfast support to whoever assumes my role. Your resilience and teamwork are vital to the future uh, success of the electricity company of Ghana. And he concludes by saying, I am back on this new chapter. Uh, as I am back on this new chapter in my life, I carry with me cherished memories and invaluable lessons learned from each of you. Thank you once again for the opportunity to be a part of this incredible organization. I look forward to uh, reaching and uh, continuing growth and success in this company. And so the letter has been signed by Dubik uh, Mahama from the MD of uh, ECG who steps down from his uh, position uh, based on the letter that we've just cited. Now we'll come back to this with lots more on this developing story, uh, but let's still stay in the energy sector uh, where we understand the minority in parliament is saying that power distributors have been shedding load and there is shortage of more than 500 megawatts of power as of uh, uh, Tuesday. Now, between Tuesday and Wednesday, the ECG has put out several notices of outages in parts of the country, but has attributed the power cuts to routine maintenance. But minority spokesperson on energy, John Jinapo, says the power cuts are actually due to load shedding, attributing the situation to poor management of the power sector. As we speak today, there is load shedding ongoing. Grid Co has been cautioned not to inform customers. Yesterday, there was a deficit of more than 500 megawatts 
Today, they are going to shed load and customers in Ghana will be affected. Talo Ghana has not been paid even one dollar for the past nine months for gas supply to Ghana Gas. And Talo is threatening to curtail supply of gas. The IPPs have just dispatched a letter to the Minister of Finance intending to hold supply of power for debt and liabilities hovering around $1.2 billion. It is sad. To say there is currently pressure on the CEO of Ghana Gas to enter into an $800 million gas processing contract. The minority insists such an arrangement must come to Parliament, without which a future NDC government will hold those who put any such contract in force for, for causing financial loss to the state. The minority once again has become aware of attempts by the Flagstaff House to compel the chief executive of the Ghana Gas Company Limited to sign a contract for gas processing at a whopping cost of more than $800 million. The initial tender had to do with a company called Phoenix. Surprisingly and strangely, that company has metamorphosized into an SPV, ostensibly to avoid parliamentary scrutiny. But more importantly, as we speak, the government of Ghana and Ghana Gas have not secured a firm commitment on the supply of raw gas for processing by this entity that they want to sign a contract with. Meanwhile, John Junapo is demanding answers on a $24 million contract between Ghana Gas and a private company for a bottling plant. According to John Junapo, his side believes the contract has been inflated. I have with me here documentary evidence, and I'll make that available to you, the media of a contract between this same Ghana Gas and Rockshaw for a bottling plant at a whopping sum of $24 million when a similar plant was constructed in terms of $14 million. To add insult to injury, this company has received 30% advance payment. And my information on the field shows that the company has not executed this work. The work was to be done within 24 months. From 2021 to date, your guess is as good as mine. And yet, Ghana Gas has been obstructed from pursuing Rockshaw to either retrieve the monies or compel them to execute this project. So there's a lot more happening on the energy sector. Let's bring in Nana Mwesi the fourth, who is the executive director for the Institute for Energy Security, IES, and he joins us now. And I'm grateful to you for joining. Let's begin from the Electricity Company of Ghana because the MD of that company, Samuel Dubik Mahama, we're learning this evening that he, he is resigning from his post. You've been in this sector for some time. Your reaction to this news? Kojo, I'm sorry. Um, good evening to you, to your viewers. Mm. But your line is very faint. Okay. N N N can you hear me now? Is it okay? Uh, I it's better. Okay. So I I'm trying to get your thought on the decision by the MD of ECG to lay down his, 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 you know, to step away or step down from his position. Well, Kojo, it's, it's a good decision that he's made. Um, uh, it came too late. But better late than never. A good one is made. And uh, although he said for personal reason, yes, it may be because that today he conceived mm. that the poor performance of the uh, of ECG uh, threatens the stability of the economy because the ECG has gradually become a fiscal burden on the economy and threatened the power supply, uh, you know, security mm. as well. And so it is good that he's he has resigned. But then that is not complete without the resignation of the board. We must also call on the board to do the honorable thing by uh, also re resigning so that we get fresh minds in the boardroom to make the right decision for the recovery of the ECG. Mm. But Nana, why is the challenge in, in the energy sector the, 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 that of the doing of the ECG? Uh, and, um, you realize that within the value chain, uh, ECG 
sit at the tail end of the value chain. Mm. Someone supplies the fuel, another transmits the fuel for the generators. Mm. Generators, uh, whether IPPs or um, government agency, generate the power. We could do the transmission. Then the last leg of the value chain is the distribution of the power uh, from the ECG to our homes and businesses. At the end of the day, ECG is expected to collect all the revenue so that it goes back, put it into the cash waterfall uh, system or mechanism, mm. then ensure an equitable distribution of all the contributions or costs incurred by the utilities within the value chain. Yeah. Mm. For almost one year running, ECG has not been able to collect anything in excess of 55%. It means that on a monthly basis, month on month, we have a huge debt or revenue leakage of more than 35%. Mm. Which business in Ghana will survive? Even my grandmother selling cassava in a confiable will not survive with a leakage of 35% of the revenue uh, collection. Okay. And so the sector players are suffering, VRA is suffering, GMPC, uh, Great Coal, WAP Coal, Imperial Power Producers are suffering because the, the, the ECG's non-performance and revenue collection challenges is also causing a cost constraint on their business. Mm. Mm. And so if the power sector will work efficiently as we have it today, we must have a good cash collection and we must also stop the leakages, whether in terms of uh, technical or commercial losses. Okay. So, so once he has stepped down and we know the challenge is there, what must government do to ensure that that problem, you know, does not come back again with the appointment of a new MD? Well, uh, we, we government needs to invest in the ECG, mm. um, in, in all facets of, uh, of the company, uh, in the distribution uh, grid, whether in transformer, whether in capacitors, whether in the wires, whether in the prepaid system, or the, 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 the bulk metering system, government needs to do a huge investment. We expect that by now we should not have a postpaid meter. The world has transitioned so fast to a smart economy. Mm. And so we expect government to be also smart and the ECG must be smart as well in its own metering system and cash collection system. Okay. And so mm. a huge investment must be made in the ECG mm. to solve both the technical and the commercial losses that hovers around 35% uh, uh, percent today. Okay. But, but, but let, still staying in the power sector, the minority in, par in Parliament is alleging that there is a deficit of around 500 megawatts uh, is this something that you also know with your sources in a sector? Exactly the case. Uh, we have a shortfall about 520 megawatts as we, uh, uh, you know, got the indication this afternoon. And uh, we're trying to look at the possible causes. Yes, we pick an indication that um, it's been a cash, uh, it's been a, a, a gas supply uh, challenge. So that uh, to the extent that some power plants in Kumasi, as we have it today, the Aumato plant is down and other plants are also down. Mm. That's why we have uh, the shortfall in generation. Mm. Okay. So it's evident in the widespread, uh, you know, uh, outages that we have in the country. Okay. Through the ECG uh, and the Greco are, are trying to manage the system by, you know, uh, cutting some part of the... Uh, consumers of so that the system or the grid can be balanced. Mm, so okay. it's a plant thing and uh, it's a plant outage that we have today. Mm, okay. Now, I'm grateful to you for joining us here on the Joy News. Thank you for having me as well. Now, the convener of the Fix the Country Movement, Oliver Bakavomo, and one other protester have been hospitalized while in police custody following the arrest by the police for engaging in unlawful assembly. The police have been fighting off claims 
they denied the protesters medical attention. More on that shortly, but uh, first, I want to take you live to the court where lawyers uh, for dozens more detained protesters are attempting, uh, were attempting once again uh, to secure bail for their client. The protesters will, uh, will all hear. Uh, they've been hearing their fate, uh, whether or not they will spend another night uh, behind a bus. My colleague Kenneth Jesse has the details of the fate of these protesters. Listen. 11 demonstrators who took part in the Stop Gallam Say Now demonstration were presented before the Accra Circuit Court today. Now, unlike yesterday, today's court proceedings dragged. That was because there were more individual lawyers representing most of the demonstrators. They argued their case, praying the court over reasons why their clients should be granted bail. At the end of a long court session, the judge adjourned the case to the 26th of September 2024, 1.30 p.m. prompt. They are expected back again to present their case before the court. One of the lawyers for the accused persons spoke to the media after the court proceedings. So we requested from the court for an unconditional release of the accused person as he need medical attention On, and also one of the accused person I represented man, uh, is an, uh, fi, an, uh, someone who is not fit to stand trial because of his condition. Because from the incoherent inco speech of the accused person, you, one can visibly see that this person needs medical attention at the psychiatric hospital. And this is someone who was promised that if you ask any policeman, you, you, you say some things in house to that policeman, the policeman will obviously give you food. So he only knew a policeman to ask him for food. And the policeman directed him to the, uh, the, the next policeman who detained him because he approached him for food. So that person is obviously someone who is not fit to stand trial. And what do you make of the decision for the court to adjourn the matter? Oh, that one is to be expected. Because from a today, today's proceedings, all, almost all the accused persons have different lawyers. So if all these different lawyers are urging on you to grant bail based on different, different conditions, one can only expect that the court will adjourn to consider same and rule on same tomorrow. Lead convener of the group Oliver Bakavomowo and Fanny Otu were absent in court today. The reason given for their absence was that both men had fallen ill and were currently on admission at the police hospital. And judgment will be passed on them as and when they are fit to face the court. From the Accra Circuit Court, Kenneth Jesse for Joy News. Well, today the police provided an update on the convener of the Fix the Country Movement, Oliver Baca Vomo, who was arrested and uh, detained. It follows accusations by his lawyers that he was denied medical attention when he fell sick while in detention. My colleague James Averji joins via Zoom with details of this particular statement. James, what does it say? The police provide very uh, contradictory information to what has been alleged by Oliver, uh, Oliver Bakakoma's lawyers. Uh, in that statement, letter by the lawyers, they say that he fell ill on the 23rd of September, which uh, was the past Monday. But in the police statement, they say that Oliver raised issues about his ill health on the eve of 24th of September, which is just yesterday, Tuesday. Uh, but the police say, uh, and in that letter by the lawyers, they say uh, the police ignored to take care of him. They sent some medical, uh, uh, I mean, items to him, but the police also ignored admitting those medical items for hours. Uh, but the police said immediately uh, his ill has came to his their attention together with one other uh, a protester who is also in police custody uh, named Fanny Otu. The police proceeded to send the two of them to the police hospital for treatment uh, on the 24th of this month, which is which was yesterday. And so it is not entirely true that they have ignored uh, giving him medical services when he raised that concern. And that two of them were taken to the police hospital. And uh, you had Ken they're saying that he was not in court. And so, uh, per the police update, uh, they, they reject that assertion and say that they've been given medical care and they are still on admission 
at the police hospital receiving the best of medical service that they could receive. Raise. With details of the police statement there. Away from that, the paramount chief of Chifo at Mokwa in the central region, his linguist and two others have been hauled before hey. a Kumasi High Court hey. for allegedly carrying out illegal mining activities on the concession of a licensed small scale mining company. Officials of Kadesh Mining Enterprise, in a rate, say over 85 percent of the 14.73 acres of the company's concession at Chifu at Timokwa, have been destroyed through the illegal mining operations. Ohim Terry of our security desk has more in the following report. Kadesh Mining Enterprise was granted a five-year mining license on June 11, 2024 to embark on small-scale mining operation after it first applied for a mining lease in 2023. But before the company could embark on commercial activities, the concession was occupied by the Omahini of Chufu Atimokwa, or Siadir Yokwesi Kenin IV, Ochiame Yao Asamwa, Ernest Aholu, and their foreign collaborators, led by Wan Wun Minji, a Chinese. According to court documents, illegal mining activities allegedly perpetuated by the Paramount Chief, who admitted electronically to the offense, and his assigns have caused Kadesh Mining Company commercial disadvantage and aggravated loss. As a result, officials of Kadesh Mining Enterprise are seeking the recovery of 15 million Ghana cities in gold mined by the defendants and general damages of 20 million Ghana cities against the defendants and jointly. Hansen Kojo Kodia is counsel for the plaintiffs. We had private investigations into those who were involved in the mining activities. Now we came to discover that the Omanhine, you know, of um, Timokwa was the brain behind all these illegal activities and had contracted some officers or agents who are on the land mining. We have electronic evidence to, 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 to say that he and his people are on the land working at the moment. Now, when we serve them with the rate of summons, they entered conditional appearance and they have come to court to say that uh, they would want the matter to be transferred to central region. Meanwhile, the trial judge, his lordship, Samuel Faraday Johnson, has verbally ordered the Omahini of Chufu Atimokwa and his assigns to stay off the disputed concession until the final determination of an interlocutory injunction filed by the plaintiff as the case is adjourned to October 14, 2024. From Kumasi, for Joy News, Ohim Interior reporting. Now, some Chinese miners, backed by some influential Ghanaian collaborators, have taken over one of Goodfield's old shaft in Takwa, threatening the company's operations. Despite a series of warnings, arrest, and an injunction from the Takwa High Court prohibiting further development and activation of the main Mantream shaft, uh, the Chinese miners and their signs have laid siege and are solidifying their takeover. Labour FM's Rastos Asari Donko, who has been speaking to sources at Goodfield's and assessing the situation, reports that could be conflict and fatalities in the encroachment is allowed to fester. There's more in this report. Goldfields Ghana Limited acquired Takwa Goldfields Limited in July 1993 and developed a new open pit mine by 1998. In 1999, the company closed down its underground operations and associated shafts, including the Mantrim shaft, located within the Brahabebome community. Some indigents of the town are leading Chinese miners in an encroachment and a forced reopening of the shaft. The Mantrim shaft is located a few meters from the pit wall to Goldfield's main Tebrebe pit and there are concerns any occupation of the shaft could lead to fatalities. Experts at the University of Mines and Technology have spelled out the dangers in opening the old shaft for small-scale mining. 
Here is Dr. Eric Stem, Senior Lecturer and Head of the Department of Environment and Safety, Dr. Shadrak Fusu, Senior Lecturer, Minerals and Material Science, and Dr. Theophilos Joe Asari, Environment and Occupational Health and Safety. Underground mines, when there is going to be blasting, you have to be able to account for everybody who has gone underground and make sure that they've come to the surface before you do blast. But I think the challenge with most of the small-scale underground mines is that there is really no proper system to account for those who have gone underground. So it's possible that you are doing a blasting, but some people are still underground because they've not been accounted for. So they start chopping off the pillars that was left by um, the, the technical people who designed the underground mining. And then they tend to use wood to support the natural roof. If you look at the strength of the, of the, of the roof, and using wood, you can see there is vast different terms of um, uh, um, structural design, which can lead to collapse. The ventilation system, which is another key area. So in an underground mine, you have an opening, and there's another opening will become your venting point. They don't know. Most of the community mine, you have one, two pit, or maybe one tunnel, and you have two community mines. So instead of being entry and exit, one is using this point as an entry. The other community mine is also using the same point as an entry. So ventilation is a very key issue. Police interventions, series of requests to national security and applications to the Chamber of Mines and the Minerals Commission to help stop the encroachment have failed to yield any results. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaredonko, Takwa, Western Region. Well, the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals have always been an abstract subject to many Ghanaians, especially the lay person. With only six years to reach the attainment of the global goals, many households reel under the impact of the environmental challenges. This is attributable to the low public sensitization to attract more people to strive for a sustainable nation. In creating public awareness as a country races against time to achieve the goals, an architect and lecturer at the Economic Rain University of Science and Technology has developed local symbols and meanings for the sustainable goals. Emmanuel Bright Kweku has more. 17 unique goals to be achieved globally by countries under the United Nations for a sustainably developed world. <laughs> Ghana, like many countries who signed this treaty, have more to accomplish before the 2030 targeted deadline. But are people even aware of these goals? This level of low awareness confirms the 2023 research on examining the level of public awareness on the sustainable development goals in Africa. It revealed some Ghanaians knew about goal 1 to 4 of the SDGs, but generally awareness of the global goals was low. Out of the numerous languages of the world, the SDG symbols are only transcribed into six dialects. But researchers in Ghana are adopting the local arts and meanings from the Edinkra symbols to represent the goals. Known as Edinkra Tecta, the 17 designs were selected from the over 96 known Edinkra symbols and localized into the Ghanaian parlance for a more comprehensive description while clamoring for action. Professor Rexford Asasi Opong is the brain behind the piece. One of the key things about sustainability is your ability or our capability and ability to appreciate our culture and bring culture into it. Sustainability is about people. It's about development. The Edinkra symbol, despite being artistic, has meanings which communicates. Edinkra symbols do. But from Sankofa. Sankofa nature say. Health and well-being basically is abstract, but if you bring it to our local system and you are showing a symbol of a hoarding to the local person, he will know that if I have strength, 
if I have a hoarding, I'll be able to work and also reduce poverty. There is a call for the incorporation of the symbology in the local curriculum to expose children to climate action and environmental sustainability. For Joy News, my name is Emmanuel Bright Kweku. You're watching Joy News Prime. We'll take a break here. We'll be back with more. Please do stay. Well, let's do election headquarters now, which is brought to you by Petrosol Platinum Energy, Energizing Dreams, the Chartered Institute of Management Accountant and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountant, also by the German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental, Wellness and Beauty, by the Top Box Technologies, a convenience service and Youth Bridge Foundation, bridging the gap for positive youth development and... Uh, the MPP flag bearer, Dr. Mahmoud Obama, has revealed plans to launch a groundbreaking credit score system into Ghana's economy next month. He emphasized that the system will make higher purchase arrangement easier and more accessible for consumers, boosting purchasing power across the nation. During his campaign tour of, of the Asin Central constituency, Dr. Baumi explained that the Ghana card and digital address system introduced by the MPP government have paved the way for this transformative initiative, aligning Ghana with global financial practices. Ghana card, identity. digital address system, Obia our address. Yabaya mobile money interoperability. Obia our bank account. Ain't he a dear a here? Say, be a so yabaya credit system no, and also Wagana. We have put in place all the pillars. Ain't he over the last two years? Ye yen huejuma to introduce a credit system into Ghana. Ya me adum na me ka se next year na e be share ase but ye wie ejuma no so ya me adum next month i will launch the credit scoring system for Ghana Meanwhile, Dr. Baumia, we unveiled plans to add 2,000 megawatts of solar power to the national grid by 2025. He stated that the solar panels will be manufactured in Ghana, creating jobs and boosting the local economy. Dr. Baumia also promised that his initiative would lead to a 50% reduction in electricity tariffs, offering significant relief to Ghanaians. Next year, you will take a bold decision to move away from oil and gas and go for solar power, solar power to generate electricity, solar power. Solar power, no nyamini adia ke in free you. Free, ye jane janobo. So me be hane si 2,000 megawatts of solar power. Edi a share ye generation mix no mo. Edi electricity prices ne buono e beba form by 50% reduction by 50%. Ever boy in our businesses and homes in our cost of electricity is very difficult for our people. In the solar power, no, a boy in Nananum a fairy for me solar panels, no, so um. You bear 2,000 megawatts now. You bear here solar panels. You bear to be so much. We will have to set up solar farms in many districts in Ghana. And you bear here solar panels. You bear But me, me policy is a young crack solar panels. No, We will set up the factories in Ghana to manufacture all the solar panels in Ghana. <music> All right, uh, welcome back. Let's do showbiz now. And Becky Bex is here in all her glamour. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, thank you, Brace. How are you doing? I'm well. Uh, oh, I love your look tonight. Thank you so much. You look beautiful, but today you Always look, you know, extra beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's by Jesus. It's by God's grace. <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, 
well, let me bring you all the stories that you need. So in tribute to the centenary of Ifwa Sutherland, the legendary playwright mm. whose contribution have shaped Ghanaian literature and performing arts, the Ghana Theatre Festival is set to host a week-long celebration. The festival will honour her enduring legacy and celebrate the vibrant culture, heritage she helped shape the small in this report. The 2024 Ghana Theatre Festival celebration, which seeks to showcase four of Ifwa Sutherland's artworks, are going to be screened from September 25th to September 29th. At the launch of the festival, Chief Director for the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture, Robert Patrick Ancobia, reiterated the ministry's commitment to the arts industry, which he claimed aligned with Ifwa Sutherland's vision. In line with Efo Sutherland's legacy, we are embarking on initiatives that will support young and upcoming artists, revitalize our national cultural institutions, and ensure that Ghana's rich artistic traditions continue to thrive on the global stage. The board chairman of the National Theatre, Nana Fridia Ejimano Foriata, was also at the launch, eulogized Ifwa Sutherland, citing that she should be considered the matriarch of performing arts in Ghana. Ifwa Sutherland is and should be considered the matriarch of modern performing arts in Ghana. The group further called for policymakers and sponsors to join in the week long celebration. All and sundry policymakers, educationists, marketers, and lovers of this great section of the arts and entertainment to join us under our theme for this year, We Have Value. Meanwhile, Fifi Coleman, director of Fifi Coleman Productions, urged all and sundry to grace the occasion as this would raise funds for the legacy project in Ifwa Sutherland's name. There's a lot of lessons to be learned, there's a lot of faces to be seen, stories that you read in school that is coming back on stage, you all know these stories. We're bringing them back to you for you to come and also know the real life as we honor her as well and also support the, the legacy projects that is uh, in her name. Jessica Patu report for Joy News. Sean Combs, Didi ending the news here on Joy News Prime. We're grateful for your time. Remember to brush your teeth with Pepsodent this evening. Tomorrow when you wake up, you brush your teeth with Pepsodent because with Pepsodent, every smile matters. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. Pius Koju Baka is up next with Prime Business. We're grateful for your time. <laughs>